In this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to keep your feet from overpronating or caving in when you squat. I want you to have the capability to fully move the way your body was designed to, right? Jump up the head, I'll take you back to where my problems lie. In trouble, younger daughter done some sh that made my mama cry. Out to the heavens like I bless him for I know he's lost. Caught in the trance and it's manic depression settled in. Living in the fantasy world. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Aaron Horsing, and this is episode 30 of the Ask Squat You Show. Hope everyone's having a great week so far. My first documentary called Josiah's Story just dropped on YouTube, completely free for everyone. If you haven't seen it yet, Josiah is a powerlifter who had one of the most traumatic knee injuries ever sustained or videoed. Uh, during the competition, he was crushed under 655 pounds during his third attempt at a meet and tore almost every supporting ligament in both of his knees. Uh, the documentary basically chronicles his entire journey from the injury to surgery all the way through 100 plus physical therapy visits on his path back to a full recovery. So if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. I think you guys will really like the story. So enough about that. Let's get to today's question. Today's question is from Caffeine and Barbells. It reads, hi. Thanks for all your really good videos. They've helped me a lot. I was wondering if you know of any exercises to strengthen the arch of the feet during a squat. I have flat feet and during a squat, I tend to lose my arch. Any help would be greatly appreciated. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about the foot specifically, keeping it stable and not allowing cave over whenever you go into the bottom of a deep squat, for example. Now, let's start off with a little anatomy. Your foot is extremely dynamic. It's composed of over 20 plus bones and muscles spread across four different small joints. Now, whenever we perform any of our barbell movements, whether it's a deadlift, a squat, a clean or a snatch, we require all of those muscles that work inside the foot to work together in a harmonious fashion in order to create tremendous stability and basically limit excessive motion. Your feet are basically the base to your body's house of cards. So if your feet aren't stable and are always moving around excessively, it's really gonna affect the rest of your body all the way up and your technique will never be as efficient and powerful as it can be. So it all starts with solidifying what happens at your feet. Now a great cue that can really help you with this is thinking about your foot as a tripod. If you look at the bottom of your foot, there's three big areas that I need to be in equal contact with the ground whenever you squat. There's the base of your heel, the base of your first toe, and the base of your fifth toe. This is basically a tripod, and if all three of these areas have equal pressure on them whenever you squat, your body is going to be in balance, sort of like the base to a house of cards. What happens is that often we forget about what happens as our, at our feet whenever we're lifting and allow that pressure to slide either too far in or too far out. Now, the topic of today is over pronation. What is pronation? If you look at someone's foot that has good foot stability, they naturally have an arch in their foot when viewed from the inside. Well, pronation is the excessive inward cave of that. Now, this is something that happens at the foot and ankle together often. So when we focus on improving the stability, we need to look at the ankle and the foot. Here's a simple drill you can do at home to see how well you stabilize your foot with pressure on all three parts of the tripod. So start by taking your shoes and socks off. Now make sure you're in a clean gym so you're not getting those feet all nasty. What I want you to do is think about heel, base of the first toe, base of the fifth toe, all need to have equal pressure. Now first, start just in your normal squat stance and feel for grabbing the ground like a monkey almost. Jam your big toe to the ground and feel, do you have equal pressure on all three of those parts or are you maybe too far pushed out or too far caved in? Next, what I want you to try is to stand on one foot and see what happens. Now, a lot of people, as soon as they go into a single leg stance, their foot's going to cave in. So viewed from the side, instead of keeping their foot in a good arch like this, they'll let their foot cave in. So basically you're taking all that pressure from the outside part of the tripod and shifting it in to where we have uneven pressure. Now your foot's unstable from the ground up, your technique will never be that good. So focusing on improving your ability to balance on one foot and in your head feel for how you're keeping a stable foot is the first step in fixing this. Step two, if you want to really go in depth with this, is close your eyes and see what happens. Now, as soon as you take away your visual, a lot of people's balance will really falter because they don't have a good proprioceptive awareness ability to sense their position of their feet. This is something that you have to train. So at first, if you're good with your eyes open, but as soon as you close your eyes, your foot caves in, work on closing your eyes 
and stabilizing your foot. Maybe you have to start with three seconds and then five seconds, but build yourself up to where you can stand on one foot with your eyes closed for at least 30 seconds without any wavering. That ability to sense where your foot is position-wise is going to carry over to allow you to be more stable as soon as you're under the bar, which will help your back squats and all of your other lifts be more stable from the ground up. Another aspect to think about when working on improving your foot stability is how much ankle mobility you have. Now your ankle mobility is inherently tied in to how stable your foot can be because if your ankle is not mobile, your foot will always collapse in an attempt to get down into a really deep squat. And this is why. Let's say you set up really good in a squat and you have a good arch in your foot. Well, as your knee moves forward, you need more ankle mobility. So to reach the bottom of a deep squat, most people need a pretty good amount of knee over toe translation. Well, if you have stiffness in your ankle, as you go down, your knee eventually is gonna hit that point where your shin can no longer translate forward over your toe. Therefore, in order to get down to that deeper squat, your knee will end off spinning towards the inside, which is then going to take the foot with it. So it doesn't matter how hard you work on foot stability. If you have restrictions in ankle mobility and you never work on them, and then you push your body to its depth limits during a squat, clean, or snatch, you will almost always sacrifice that foot stability in order to perform that movement that you're choosing. So let's try to perform a five inch wall test to see if you have any ankle mobility restrictions. Get yourself close to a wall, you're in a position your foot five inches from that wall. Now, if you don't have a ruler, most people that's a thumb plus an extended fist. From right here, you're going to jam your knee forward as far as you can and see, can you touch your knee to the wall without your heel popping up? Now, for some people, if you get here and then your foot has to pop off, that means that your ankle mobility is restricted. This means you need to work on your ankle mobility in order to have lasting effects in foot stability. Now, if you found a restriction in ankle mobility with that five inch wall test, definitely go back through some of my earlier YouTube videos. You can find a lot of ways to improve that mobility, but here's a simple one for this video. You're gonna find a bench. You're gonna put your foot on the bench and we're gonna work on driving our knee over our toe to feel a really good stretch in the back side of our ankle. Now, if you have a pinching sensation in the front side of the ankle when you're doing this, go back through some of my other videos and work on improving that ankle mobility restriction when you have a joint restriction, you're gonna need some banded joint mobilizations. But this is a great stretch that you can perform at home to improve that ankle mobility. Hold that stretch for about 30 seconds, do five total, go back, retest that five inch wall test and see what you found. If you improve your ankle mobility with that test, that shows you that this stretch can be really effective at helping you improve your ankle mobility that then will help you therefore improve your ability to keep your foot more stable in the bottom of a squat. Your feet are directly tied to your hips, so the action of your hips and the action of your feet need to be working together in order to have good purposeful movement. And Here's why. As you squat down, your hips keep your knees in line. If your knees cave in because your hips aren't doing their job, inherently the feet are going to be pulled in and your feet are going to collapse over. Now, if you try this, drive your knees out to the side. What happens? Your foot just pulls into an arch. If your knees go in, what happened to your feet? Your feet just caved in. So if we can work on improving the position of our hips and getting our glutes to turn on by externally rotating at our hips during the start of our squat, we can hope to keep our feet into a better position the entire time. So it's not just about thinking about the feet, but also what's going on all the way up your body in order to create good foot stability and therefore good technique. So here's a drill you can do at home to work on that. In a squat position with a resistance band around your knees, drive your knees out to the side as you perform a squat. Driving the knees out to the side will bring your foot into a good position, but also think about jamming your big toe to the ground so your knees don't push too far out to the side. This will retrain this good movement pattern. Now a question I get a lot is should you use an orthotic? Here's my thoughts. I think a lot of people will over rely on an orthotic in order to create a good arch in their foot. Now what is an orthotic? Basically, it's going to be an insert that you put in your shoe and it's going to help realign your foot. It's going to create an arch for your foot, basically, by pushing up one side of the foot. Now, whenever you have an anatomically flat foot, 
Basically, your foot has been designed to have basically no arch because of the way the bone structure is. Now, in that case, having an orthotic to help lift that side of the foot and anatomically realign the body into a better position can be very helpful. So in those cases, I do think an orthotic can be very helpful. I think a lot of people though, like I said, over rely on an orthotic and don't train their foot to be in a good position. So a lot of people are looking for that quick fix and if they can put a $200 orthotic into their shoe and all of a sudden they feel better, they think they fixed the problem. What I beg you to do is to work on building back your arch and your ability to create good foot stability through what we talked about today. Thinking about the tripod foot, looking at your ankle mobility and thinking about the position of your hips. If after all of that you still need some help from an orthotic, I think it can be helpful, but I would not use it as my first thing to do unless you have an anatomically flat foot. All right guys, so there you go. I hope you guys liked today's Ask Why You Show and were able to take away some of this valuable content to help you guys improve your foot stability and therefore the rest of your lifts. My question of the day for you is how many of you use an orthotic in your shoe and how many of you do you think need to use that orthotic all the time? Um, I hope you guys, again, are enjoying these shows. If you are, please like, comment, and share them with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. Until next week, guys, happy squatting. Hometown hero on the road doing shows and sold out arenas. You can call me what you want, but you won't ever slow my dreams up. This is the vision of a dreamer. I seem to...